Disclaimer, this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial, just a video where I document the process of developing a game dev project from beginning to end, although at some points of development I do go more in depth with code examples shown. The source code for the prototype version of this project is up on GitHub, link in the description. With all that said, let's get into the video. Wow, I can't believe it. I graduated college, got myself a job, and now that I don't have to worry about homework and tests, I finally have free time to... Guess I'll just make a Super Monkey Ball clone. That means coding the game mechanics, doing the art, and also producing the music and sound. You're probably wondering why exactly I'm recreating Super Monkey Ball of all games, and I could probably tell you that it was one of my favorite games growing up as a kid, but in all honesty, I couldn't tell you the last time I played this game other than for this video. I just think the game mechanics would be fun to recreate. Before I can start development, I'm going to do a little bit of research. So I grabbed my copy of Super Monkey Ball, popped it into the GameCube, and just started playing. Oh shit. I tested out different inputs like holding the joystick all the way back, left, and right for long durations. During this process, I died many, many, many times. So if you think about it, this is by no way a testament to my actual skills in the game. But at some point, things did devolve to me just playing the game. So here are some of the key takeaways from my research. The player moves left and right and forward and back using the camera's right and forward directions. The camera looks in the direction that the player is going in. And the most important one is the camera tilting to give the impression that the platform is tilting. Now with that out of the way. Now that I have an idea of how I want to recreate the game mechanics, I set up a new Unity project. And with the snap of my fingers, boom, we have our prototype scene set up. In the scene, we have a sphere with a rigid body as our player, a platform, and an empty game object called camera container that we put our main camera in. With its X rotation set to the angle, it'll look at the player when at rest. To get the ball rolling, I use the joystick's vertical and horizontal axes to scale the force applied to the player, and use the camera's right direction and a similar vector to its forward direction to set the direction the player moves in. I also keep the camera behind the player at a certain distance at all times. To tilt the camera, I set a max angle at which the camera can rotate on its horizontal and forward axis. Using the joystick's input ranging from negative one to one, I can slightly tilt the camera to an angle between its initial rotation and max rotation. One difference to take note is the horizontal rotation occurring on the camera container and the forward rotation occurs on the main camera object. To have the camera follow the direction the player is moving in, I take the angle between the camera's forward direction and the player's velocity and rotate the camera around its vertical axis accordingly. Alright, so we have the camera tilt and it follows the player's velocity, so we've got the camera and the movement down, right? No. We don't. You see, the camera works fine when the player is on a flat platform, but when on a slope, sometimes things can be hard to see. To solve this issue, I take the normal of the platform, pretty much a vector perpendicular to the surface, and using the angle between that and the global up vector, I can rotate the camera accordingly. Now that we got basic player and camera movement, I'm gonna start turning this into an actual game. I made a demo stage in Blender and popped it into my demo scene and added collectibles, a goal at the end, a UI showing game time, player score, and player speed, a camera at the end to switch to when the player wins a stage, and finally a game manager that handles loading scenes, keeping track of player score, transitioning the player to a dead state, and switching between cameras. When the game starts, the player is in a wait state, and the camera rotates towards it using a spiral effect that if you ask me, took me way too long to figure out the code for. Once the camera is in its starting position, the player transitions to a normal state, and can start moving freely throughout the stage. Collectibles rotate idly in their normal state. When picked up, they move above the player, then towards the score text and the UI. I kind of cheesed this effect by adding a child object to the main camera and positioning it so that when collectibles move towards it, it makes it seem like it's moving towards the text UI. When the player beats a stage, the game manager disables the main camera and enables the victory camera. And the victory camera looks at the player as it ascends into demo stage heaven, which in this case looks like a shitty congrats screen. If the player gets knocked off the stage or falls below the death height, then the camera will freeze in place helplessly watching our player fall to their death, but not for too long since the stage is then reloaded. If the player runs out the clock, the camera then freezes, and the stage is reloaded once again. And that about wraps up the core development of this project, and we can finally move to... Now for the art segment of the video, I didn't want to completely remake the original game's theme. 
So what I did was take it a step further, from Super Monkey Ball to Ultra Caveman Spheres. Running with that theme, I made a caveman version of I.I. And once I finished it, I marked its seams and started texturing it. Now I don't have OBS installed on my tablet, but I think I pretty much captured how it was texture painting Caveman Eye. Along with Caveman Eye, I also made Ball, Meet, Stage, Stages, and Goal. I made some animations for the player that'll play when they're at certain speeds or when they're at certain states. We have Idle, Walk, Run, Freak Out, and Cheer. I set the meat to be collectibles, and a goal at the end of each stage with a timer at the top, and a confetti particle effect that plays when the player passes through it. I made a decent looking skybox, changed the font so it looks a bit more similar to the original game, and a particle effect that plays when the player ascends to the next stage. I made a grass checkerboard pattern material for the floor, and a solid colored material for the boundaries. I made six stages in no particular order of difficulty. We have literal baby mode. Okay, not bad. Probably the hardest stage. Oh cool, a spiral. Also probably the hardest stage. And last but not least, hey this looks familiar. Now one quick note on stage 4, the spiral stage. When the floor normal is enabled, the camera tends to uh, freak the fuck out. So in order to work around this, or I guess, uh, you know, roll around this, <laughs> is to just set a boolean that enables whether or not to use the floor normal within a stage. When the player beats the final stage, they're awarded a bigger, better congrats screen. And to wrap up the art portion, we have the start screen of the game, in which balls slowly move downwards and rotate, revealing the game's title. So most of the music portion is going to be live recorded. This is because I didn't actually record any of the music making process, but I have a good reason for it. I didn't think it was going to be a segment at all to begin with. Normally when I work on game development projects, I kind of just worry about the coding and the art. A lot of times music tends to be an afterthought, and most of the time I'm just using royalty free sounds or I just rip music from games. Th these are game development projects I don't actually release, I, I don't steal music from games. But for this project I thought why not try making the music for it. So the first thing I did was look for a good audio workstation. Now a lot of times FL Studio tends to be the go-to program when it comes to making music, but uh, it costs money. Which is something I have, but not something I'm willing to put down for a silly segment of a YouTube video no one's gonna watch. So instead I decided to go with LMMS, which is free. I watched seconds, dare I say minutes, of music theory videos, chord progression, and just trying to learn my tools. I dropped down a couple of notes, and I got absolutely nothing. Which tended to be the trend when making a song for my game. I would go into the cycle of attempting to make a good enough beat or melody, give up, scrap it, then just try to start over from scratch. Which makes sense seeing how this is my first attempt at doing something like this. I mean, I definitely wasn't expecting coming out of this video throwing out bangers left and right. But eventually, I was able to come up with at least a one minute loop that sounded good enough to put in my game, which I'll play for you guys in the last segment of this video. For now, I'm going to talk about the other sound effects I made for this project. I made a sound for picking up collectibles in the start screen, a rolling sound that I'm going to tie to the player's velocity, and an applause sound effect that I play at the end of each stage, as well as in the congrats screen, because, uh, why not? You deserve it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was my Super Monkey Ball clone Ultra Caveman Spheres. I'm really satisfied with how the game turned out, and although I couldn't capture the original game's feel, I think what I was able to accomplish turned out to be pretty good. And to be honest, originally I was going to drop development on this after this video, but I think I'm going to continue working on this. Um, you got a letter in the mail. I'm, I'm filming something. You got a letter. Dear Grego, it has come to our attention that you made a pretty sick clone of one of our IPs even though you haven't even gone public with it. 
It is with a heavy heart, however, that we have to inform you you will have to shut down development on Ultra Caveman Spheres. But just for you. If anyone else wants to use that prototype you made and put on the hub, GitHub for the boomers reading, that's cool. Hope we can still be friends though. XOXO, President of Saga. Who's Saga?